the August 2023 study edition of the Watchtower is some of the cultiest, weirdest stuff the group has ever put out. So I will be discussing that with a very special guest. All of that and more on today's. Welcome to the show. My name is Jake, uh, and we have a very special broadcast for us today. Slightly different camera setup. Because uh, we have an in-studio guest, really for the first time in the history of Jake W. Broadcasting. Just thought of that. Uh, please welcome the lovely and talented Christina Kreitz. Hey! Hey! hey. <laughs> All right. And and give us some sound checks in, in the chat to see if we sound okay. Because I just have the one... Mike, Mikey Raffone. Mikey Raffone. I yes. feel like the perspective uh, makes me look much <laughs> taller than you, which I'm really not. Oh, it's just the chair is I really think it's, low. Yeah, I don't know if I, I can see. fix that. It's like an office chair. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I think 60 seconds is enough of a buffer for the elders, don't you think? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how invested they get <laughs> into these things. So whatever. I think I keep them pretty invested, you know? I lay a lot of steaks on, on the line. <laughs> on the grill. Oh, my God. We're the same person. <laughs> I was about to say that. And, you know, I just have to shout out this because I teased that we were running a little late. Um, because But we had a special guest. We were at the, la- uh, the wait. And Mariah Shelgren says, I hope it's your wife. She is a national treasure. Oh, that's very sweet. True. True And facts. she was right. I am on the show. And she was right. She is a national treasure. <laughs> Jake said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're here, joined today in marriage. <laughs> I mean, but that goes without saying, I guess. I mean, you. it's great that you said it. I said it <laughs> anyway. I mean, we could be joined here not in marriage, and that would be very <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, and I do think we're going to go over this latest Watchtower. This. <laughs> <laughs> So um, sorry, you guys. This setup is definitely, you know, meant for one person. So it'll be interesting. And it, it, that one person should be me, right? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. So at, cool. at some point. You can, you can leave. <laughs> that just reminded me of. Um, I think you should leave. I, well, that too. And also, <laughs> so I was in service with, I I think I probably told you this before, mm. but uh, old, old PB. Oh, yeah. oh, and PB he, and Jay. He, oh, PB and Jay. Hey, PB and right. Jay. <laughs> and, he, and he told me, like, okay, um, at one of these doors, I'm just going to kind of turn it over to you, let you take over the presentation. But I, I'm not going to tell you when. It'll be, like, a good practice for you. And I said, no, you're not going to do that. That's the weirdest thing I think I've ever heard somebody say. He, like, I'm not going to tell you when. You're just going to know. He's, like, seven months older than me, but acts like... He's, he's seven years younger. No, older. Like he viewed himself as like, I'm your like spiritually mature father. But I meant like in reality, he acts like he's seven years younger. Than in he reality, is. yeah, there's like a big difference between his <laughs> self perception and uh, reality. <laughs> Speaking of which, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, yes, I'm realizing I have a little bit of my breakfast sandwich in my teeth, and that's why I'm moving my mouth strategically. Um. I appreciate you telling us what's going on. Speaking of strategic mouth movements, that's really what speaking is. Mm, and true. would you like to speak a little bit as to why you are here? What 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 brings you here today? You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's no. the end of my interview, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> um, no, I decided, I mean, it's been a probably a month in the making of me deciding whether or not I was going to join. I think that people probably anticipated this moment um, because I've been like jumping in and out of your streams. True. Um, But over the last like few weeks, it's been like, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? Um, And I think that I just finally like decided, I think that, now's the time now's the time we're in the last of last days so we might as well do it now (laughs) true true you still (laughs) believe that fervently yeah yeah Yeah. i really do you're hanging on to the armageddon part of it (laughs) and now i'm gonna 
preach about it. Get ready, guys. To reassure everyone, Peaches is in her little bed right next to us. She's just very sleepy. No, she's not. Not anymore. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I can go get Peaches, though. Nah. Yes. Okay. I'll go get Peaches. Go for it. Great interview so far. Uh, our guest has left. <laughs> no, she's going to go grab the, the puppy. Uh, and, you know, I've always felt like... Uh, whatever Christina wants to do is okay by me. So she's the first time she showed up on the stream. She just like, I was streaming. She peeked her head in the room and was like, hi. I was like, Hey, and she's like, can I hop on camera? And I was like, okay. And uh, so Christina's just, she's very bold and, and brash. Not belongs in the trash. <laughs> I just realized <laughs> that. Yeah. Reference. And there's peachy. Peachy. Was she sleeping in the bedroom in that little spot? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's super sleepy. I've anticipated this moment, but in a very innocent and friendly way. <laughs> right. Um, as, as have I, in a very innocent and friendly way as well. True. So if you want to, you know, throw down a super chat and help us contribute to Seriously. the... Seriously. Contribute to the Ohio Exodus Fund. <laughs> I mean... It, it's our Ohio... It's like the Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio Exodus. <laughs> but, yeah, there's too many vowels in that to make it work. Baby. Mm, she says more. Oh, she's a big yawn. Um, okay, she's going to go in that night now. It's too oh distracting because she's so cute. I won't be able to think. <laughs> um, but yeah, Christina, you know, I, I think I, we want to talk a little bit about your waking up story. Yeah. And I can say for my part that it had absolutely nothing to do with me. No. In fact, it was... <laughs> You trying to wake me up did the opposite effect, to yeah. be honest. And yeah. I think that I was, you know, I, I in my head, was mm -hmm. trying not to be too pushy about stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just think, like, no matter how little you try or how much you try, like, any attack on the organization mm -hmm. or just any criticism will be perceived as an attack. Yeah. Because the organization is part of your identity as a Jehovah's witness. So, or at least that's what you're taught. So, mm -hmm. so like indoctrinated into your psyche that when somebody comes at you with any sort of like criticism or question that you don't know how to, you know, receive at all, you don't know the answer to, you can't help but feel like that's an attack and you immediately go into shutdown mode or defense mode. Yeah. And I mean, you brought up good questions. I just didn't want to hear them because I was not in that kind of frame of mind. Yeah. And it became clear, you know, we had very difficult, tearful conversations mm -hmm. many times. And I, I do think we just reached a place where it's like, we love each other and, and don't want to be apart. Mm -hmm. But I think we just have to make religion off uh, off the table. Yeah, we were fine. We were fine with talking about the Bible. I think we had really great. That's true. Biblical yeah. conversations. But the moment that it went into any kind of like religious topic, mostly about uh, the organization, it became yeah. more of a battle than it did a conversation and that's where we would get into more heated conversations and like I would immediately not want to be a part of it and like your desperation was to help me um but I felt it as like you were trying to convince me of something that wasn't true yeah and I was like no yeah not, not a thing I don't want that so I feel like it was me backing off and us agreeing, like, we're not going to talk about this, uh, that, you know, it, it gave you enough space mm -hmm. to just do your own thing. And I think that's, you know, important just because um, I get emails from people. In fact, I just recently... The other day, I got an email from somebody, you know, who's in a relationship, much like ours was, where, you know, one spouse is awake and one is not. Mm -hmm. And it's something I know that we want to talk about more in detail at some point. Mm -hmm. But um, I always give the same advice, which is, like, just try and be a good 
husbands. Mm -hmm. You know, that's hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> or try and be a good dad, as the JW.org website brings wow. to our attention today. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, I loaded up old JW.org to pull up the watchtower, <laughs> and the front page article made me almost jump out this, you know, one the first floor window. <laughs> Uh, it was how to be a good dad. <laughs> In case nobody knows how to do that. There's, yeah. There's advice. Oh, yeah. They've got the best advice on that. Um, what was it that started you down the path of, like, asking questions about the religion? I think that for me, I saw how, I mean, I, I know how seriously you took being a Jehovah's Witness. Mm. You were actively involved in the congregation. Um, you know, you pioneered. And then all of a sudden you had these doubts that I didn't understand. And I was like, well, if Jake found information that was really upsetting to him, what is that information? Mm. Like, you're a very smart person. And <laughs> you're welcome, Punky. Um, <laughs> and I was like, you're not easily convinced of things. Like, absolute, mm. like, actually the opposite of that. You're <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> um, so I was like, he had to have come across something that I, like, that really upset him about the organization and I guess I just couldn't let that go. Mm -hmm. And I finally was like, I think I, I like, I remember turning to you and I was like, okay, what, what is it that you, that you want to tell me? I feel like my memory of it is a little different, actually. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. I mean, at least like as far as when, when you approached me uh, about wanting to watch something. Well, I think that, yeah, our, our perspectives are obviously going to be different. No, no, no. We are in unity in all things. <laughs> because my introspection is going to be probably less, like, I don't know. Wrong. Than my, my mean. Uh, yeah, as you stumble through the sentence. I can't be trusted to even finish one sentence. <laughs> no, I guess I just, I, I'm sure that it probably felt like I was battling you more than mm. I guess I don't understand what, what you mean by that. Oh no. I just meant, here, you want to hold the baby? Mm -hmm. I just meant, um, her <laughs> foe is in my shirt. Um, like I remember you coming to me, like you started to ask me more questions mm -hmm. about what I was doing and what I was talking about mm -hmm. or like, you would ask like, so like, what were you talking about in your video? Mm -hmm. And I would try and not give too much detail or mm -hmm. whatever, but it started to be clearer to me that you were at least okay with, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of that, but I was still very trepidatious. And then at one point, somehow I, I brought up the pillow videos, yeah. uh, <laughs> which if you want to know more about that, uh, I, can you? Yes. Yeah. Me and XJW Caleb talked about it on a stream. Ooh. I think mm -hmm. he, kind of watched our copyright removed his uh, videos about it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, and so I mentioned it and you were like, okay, I actually want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> remember, we were at Roosters down the street and we had walked there. That's right. And we walked I, back. I remember we did have like a like legitimately serious conversation about like. Yeah, we did. How? Because we don't ever have really serious conversations anyways. <laughs> that was our very first. That time. was the first one. <laughs> that was the first time. Yeah. No, but I remember like that was the first time I like I vocalized that like what was in my head about how I felt and the fact that like, okay, what are the things that you know that I don't know that have concerned you and why you are where you're at? Yeah. I think like, I think another part of it too, uh, is that you had come into contact with another witness wife yes, who was in your situation. It was mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. Somebody who I, look up to a lot. I don't want to 
you know, say their names because uh, I didn't clear this with them that I'd be talking <laughs> about this. But, you know, somebody whose experience uh, meant a lot to me. I, I've been able to, to connect with him and he was married uh, and she was uh, still a witness. And she emailed me uh, because, you know, my contact information is in, in the video descriptions and stuff and said, I would really like to, you know, pass on some words to Christina. And so I got, I, I kind of told you, I was like, okay, this is weird. Uh, but I got this email mm -hmm. <laughs> from a witness, you know, and so anyway, but like you guys were in contact. I think that gave you a lot of validation as far as I remember of like, you're not the only person going through this. Yeah. And we talked a lot about how like in the organization, there's not any like support or like literature or anything about witnesses who are quote unquote married to apostates. Yeah. And yeah. like, no matter how hard you look, there's, there's not, I mean, there's information and support about like, what to do when your husband cheats on you or what <laughs> or looks do, at porn as we'll see later <laughs> or looks at porn like there's all these other things that you can find um like support and guidance on yeah but anything about like staying with your apostate spouse there's nothing on yeah and this sister who i'm still in contact with wrote the branch about it while we were like early on in our relationship yeah um, or in our in our friendship and um she showed me the response and it was just such a generic response that the the branch had like yeah. not anything worth feeling good about just like oh you know here's some articles that can help you like you can glean principles out of these articles about your situation um but we'll take into consideration the fact there that there are other um christians in your in similar situations as you the end yeah and of course yeah if they point you to articles that you've already read mm -hmm. a, a million times mm -hmm. uh which is <laughs> all they can ever really do read our articles right. so that that i was, was a big help too like you were able to communicate your frustrations mm -hmm. with shortcomings of the organization mm -hmm. because this is obviously a real problem but nobody talks about it. And mm -hmm. in fact, you know, you had both received encouragement mm -hmm. <laughs> from witnesses to leave your unbelieving spouse. Mm -hmm. Me. Yeah. 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 From Can you imagine? No, I mean, <laughs> I can, I live the experience. <laughs> I don't have to imagine. Can you imagine that happening? <laughs> oh yeah, you can. Real, you know, real quick, let's, let's shout out, um, a, a couple of nice super chats. Daniel Iglesias, uh, 1999 super sticker. Nice. A, the governor. Going to watch the replay being taken to a Father's Day lunch. How nice. That's awesome. And happy, Fa happy Father's Day, guys. And a very special fuck you to Mark Weatherill. I might like catch like replay because like I'm not getting, I'm like getting a nosebleed from the overload of like not meant in an overly critical way or like anything. <laughs> What? Okay. Wow, what a piece of shit. Fuck that guy. That seems like uh like, like uh, a hey personal Mark. issue. Like. Hey, hey Mark, try filming yourself <laughs> talking and thinking and articulating in real time in front of over a hundred people and see how you do. Oh whatever. Let's get him on the show. I would love that. Like, Mark, do you want to come, like, on the show, like, like and talk to me and, like, uh, have a good time? Like, I don't know. Like? <laughs> like and subscribe. Thanks. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> hey, we got a joint bank account, so it's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you want to only support Christina, I can't guarantee that. Thanks. I have to be honest. <laughs> thanks, thanks, XJW, XJW Caleb. I, I appreciate you. Um. So we watched the pillow videos. Uh, I the first real thing that you watched uh, was like, that was critical of the organization was not from an XJW, mm -hmm. but from the channel Knowing Better. Yeah, who does uh, really great videos on a variety of topics, just does deep dive video essays. Mm -hmm. He did one of the Mormons, which we watched. Yes, 
yeah. strategically on my end. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so that was the one that you showed me first. And then um, we discussed that he had, he did one on Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was like, okay, let's watch it. And it was one of those moments where you like, like, like. No. like. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let it get in your head. It's, a, it, it, it's one of those moments where you realize that you're not as special as you were taught you were. That's the thing that I think is striking about it is mm -hmm. most of it is just him going through the mm -hmm. history of the organization, yep. which intellectually, you know, but mm -hmm. I think I know for me, same thing with like reading about it in crisis of conscience, you are reading without the gauze of this was all prophetic. Mm -hmm. and it was all supposed to happen. And Jehovah's blessing was on it. When you just read it as a literal history of a religion, it's mm -hmm. like mundane and not yes. special. Mm -mm. And of course you learn stuff that they don't teach yeah. in schools right <laughs> ministry schools <laughs> um yeah he did his research and uh i i do believe got some yeah. help from mm -hmm. some xjw's in, in the research of the video yeah it was really striking to me how unbiased it was um it was i think that's why it really struck me as a really well done, really important video for me in my waking up process. Um, because yeah. it wasn't one of these biased videos that the organization makes you think is propagated out there against witnesses. Right. You know, this is what would be classified <laughs> as like negative or critical yeah. information. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just factual history. Absolutely. <laughs> and I was, I was sitting there going like, there's, actual like accredited information that we learn in the organization about witnesses throughout this video yeah. there's just blank spaces that aren't filled that the organization yeah. leaves out that he fills in for you that is very true like i think the thing that is really interesting is how political it is in terms of Russell dies. Rutherford's not even on the list of people mm -hmm. to succeed him. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, pulls a real life succession. Totally and, he does. You know. Yeah, he sees an opportunity and he like really Yeah, he's he he wands games it. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh yeah. <laughs> nah yeah yeah that's a pretty big spoiler but anyway that's fine um just rewind it and mute it yeah if you heard that <laughs> yeah rewind <laughs> it and mute it <laughs> and then um we watched a lecture by bart ehrman ba yes yeah, bart ehrman yeah that lecture literally made me cry like yeah, yeah. like that was the real yes because i moment. realized that witnesses are just like every doomsday um yeah like doomsday yes, group yeah. yes pro pro prophesying the end like it's just taking a page out of the same book and publishing it into a different and like adding a different title to it right I like one learning experience that I had from this that might uh oh yeah I should drop the link to the Bart Ehrman lecture. Uh, let me see if I can find it. But um, you don't know how, like, the sorts of things that your partner is going to be affected by. Like, the things that bothered me that caused me to wake up were not the things that caused Christina to wake up. And, like, her emotional reaction to things, sometimes... I didn't know that she was picking up on something that she actually was picking up on or, you know, like <clears throat> all of her interior experience. I don't know why I shut it like that. Uh, <laughs> Are you Sean Connery? I'm confused. Your internal experience. Make sure you add like to that. <laughs> like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> um, you had all of this pressure from within the congregation and snide little comments some of which you would tell me, but a lot of which you, you wouldn't mm -hmm. probably because you're like, I don't want to reinforce. His <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just don't think that anybody should know what people are saying about you when it's like upsetting like that. Like, 
Um, I know I wouldn't want people to know, you know, if somebody was saying something that's demeaning or upsetting in any kind of way, I just, I don't know. I just didn't want you to feel even worse about how, like what you, how you felt, you know, you were already feeling like upset. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just trying to figure out my thoughts. You were already feeling upset. I didn't want you to feel worse. Like you're going right. through a really rough time being shunned and figuring out your faith crisis and like you were in a yeah. better place, but like, I don't want to reinforce your anger and bitterness. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like so. better than being set on fire, but now you're in the burn <laughs> ward. <laughs> yes, unit. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I don't want to reopen those wounds. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Uh, what a nice little analogy. We just, <laughs> this is why we're great together. <laughs> right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, you for the past, uh, I don't know, almost a year probably mm -hmm. uh, have been mentally awake and have just mm -hmm. been deconstructing and you've, you've gone back to school. Um, you've been going to therapy mm -hmm. and you're just kind of doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't released like the second part of our interview because like you recorded a video mm -hmm. that you like we might release, but then mm -hmm. you were like, I don't know, maybe yeah. I don't want to disassociate. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah. 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 Where are you at with that now? Do you think, I mean, I, I are you just kind of like let the cards fall where they may? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm on your stream talking about well, it. So. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. This is already going out. To people. Yeah. Um, um, I feel like at this point, like, I don't talk to a lot of my extended family, family anyways. Um, when my dad died in 2021, it kind of like distance or put a strain on like, at least in my perspective, I don't know if my mom and, and my sister would um, agree, but it put a strain on our relationship. Mm. Um, like, it's hard for me to think to like reach out and call people. Um, my dad was kind of like the the glue that held us together in that regard. Yeah, and now he's not here to do that. So uh, it's it's hard for me to think to pick up the phone and and call or text. So I feel like I'm at this point where I just want to make myself happy. And I yeah. was doing a lot of things that made other people happy. Um, after my dad died, after you were, after your surgery, after you were shunned, like yeah. all of these major <laughs> emotional life events, like rocked my world. Yeah. Um, I was tired of putting everybody first because you're always told Jehovah everybody else and then yourself <laughs> yeah and um when i wanted to put myself first people were like don't don't isolate yourself christina satan will get you if you isolate yourself and i'm like i just need to take care of my emotional and mental health that yeah. is all but the more i tried to do that the more pushback from the congregation i got and like when they were taking care of me it was so like on like shallow it was yeah like there's always conditions on things and i'm not the kind of person where i put conditions on things when i love you i love you when i'm loyal i'm loyal when you break my trust you break my trust like yeah. i'm just that kind of person so when people have a condition put on things because they feel like they can or they're told they should and they don't they don't act authentically themselves, it really bothers me. And I think that through your surgery, through dad's passing, and then through your shunning, I just saw a lot of inauthentic personalities and like yeah. actions. And that really bothered me. And I realized in that moment, like if these people aren't authentic or even if they do think they're authentic because I mean, I was in their place at one time too, and I thought I was being authentic, you know? Yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough one, you know? Like, you, you know that you did the same thing. I'm saying you, but I mean, like, mm -hmm. one, one knows, one did the same thing. <laughs> and I, 
I struggle with that a lot, especially with my parents. Uh, I think it's harder for me to relate to that because I don't have children. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would feel more sympathetic towards them if I did have kids. Yeah. I think I'd probably feel even less than I do now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. at the same time, uh, I do think it was valuable for me, you know, when, when you were still pee me to be like, I was in this exact same situation mm -hmm. and I know how I would have reacted. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also, you know, this whole thing again showed to me, like, I, I don't know fucking anything. Like I, people's perceptions are, are so different, you mm -hmm. know, but my perception was the congregation is rallying around you and that's probably going to keep you in. And, you know, I was pretty happy in our, marriage I, I felt like we were making it work but uh obviously worried mm -hmm. um and just kind of taking it one day at a time but now i know that the congregation's reaction was was largely upsetting to you mm -hmm. because it was shallow yeah because people would you know especially during your surgery people would you know bring food over and they would be like well this is for you jake and like, maybe not in these words, but this was my, yeah. this was the summary of the situation. Like, this is for you. And Jake only gets to reap the benefits of it because you're still a servant of Jehovah. And that yeah. to me, like, we're supposed to be people who do good to people because we're supposed to. Yeah, because it's like, the right thing to yes, do. Yes, exactly. Because we're supposed to be reflectant of God's personality. And I mean, if I know... If I'm taught the correct God in the Bible, then he wouldn't be like, well, this is for you, but don't give it to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like now that I see it with eyes wide open, I realize, well, that is the God of the Bible. He is very conditional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, when you, when you look at it through the lens that you're given as a witness, you're like, why are we taught to be good you were told to be good towards all but never never do we do that it's, we're only yeah. good towards the people who matter right mm -hmm. and then we put on this facade that we're good towards all and yeah. mm -hmm. and i really felt that when you were going through your surgery and people were doing what they thought was good towards all but it was very like underhanded yeah and very you know inauthentic in their display of love and support like they i i appreciate what they did but you could see right through it, it was very transparent so i never want to be yeah. unappreciative of what they did for us but like yeah i was i mean i was appreciative of it i was i was a little surprised mm -hmm. you know but i i also understand from your perspective like it was, it was weird for me too, but I also kind of expected it. You want any water? Yeah. Um, I kind of expected it in terms of like, they're going to find a way to mm -hmm. <laughs> help Christina and, mm -hmm. and make it, make that the context for <clears throat> stuff like that. Cause you know, people really did try and prevent me from getting my claws in you, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. And I think yeah. that's a, big reason why you wanted to jump on the stream is yeah. because I I know that if anything I was a detriment to you waking Absolutely. up um and that this is all you and I think that that's that's what's frustrating too is like you know it wasn't because of anybody that caused me to get baptized and it wasn't because of anybody that caused me to find my way out of the organization yeah. and not want to be associated with it. And the whole precedence that they said that it's Jehovah that leads you to the organization and it's Satan who takes you out. It's so, <laughs> it's so yeah. upsetting because that means I have no autonomy over who I am and the choices that I make in life. And I'm sorry, but whether this puts my, my gravestone in the ground or not, I don't care, but like I make every decision because I make those decisions. And Jake, I love you. 
but you don't have that much power. To control <laughs> no, me. I don't. I don't. I nor do spirits that I can't see. Right? <laughs> let's be let's be clear about. That's exactly what they want you to think, obviously. <laughs> and we just recently had a friend of ours. <gasps> that's oh, so no, that's just a very online oh. like, chi clip chimping is like you know taking somebody's like clip from a stream out of context to make them look bad, and, <laughs> and <laughs> that's true. They do that with the Bible. That's so true. That's a good comparison. Um, and we just recently had a friend reach out to us. Um, she's yeah. Pimo and. We asked her what they, they've been saying about us. Yeah, but this was somebody who <laughs> we knew really well yeah. and like knew, like knows my family. And so I was like, okay, what? I haven't been able to ask anybody. Is there like any gossip about us? And <laughs> and she said that they, they have been saying that Jake took me out of the truth. And that really upset me because I'm like, yeah. nobody does anything. Like I'm the one who does things to me, right? Yeah. Like aside from things outside my control, right? Like the reality of it is, is I have control over my decisions and my actions. So the situation that I find myself in where I've woken up and I realize that this is a cult and I don't want to be a part of it. And it is harmful to all kinds of people who yeah. don't conform in any way. I don't want that. Yeah. So my decision is my decision and it has nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah. And so it was really upsetting to me when I heard that, like you, they think that you're the one who took me away. Like, yeah, well, I can totally appreciate that because I remember uh, the frustration. I hadn't really thought about it until you were talking about this, but I remember saying to you at, at a dinner, they said that to me at a dinner. They said, <laughs> I said this to you at a dinner that, that we had once when I was like having doubts and stuff. And you, you mentioned, you know, Satan and stuff like that. And I, I got really defensive. Like, I was like, no, no, like that, that's robbing me of like my own ability mm -hmm. to like, just think critically through things. And all throughout the process, it, it was really frustrating my parents like, well, where are you getting this from? I don't know what you heard or what you've seen. And mm -hmm. I know for me, I arrived at the conclusions that I didn't believe anymore before I had done any apostate research. Mm -hmm. And so I only, and I only did it because I was like, well, I don't have anything to lose at this point. Might yeah. as well see what they say. Cause I've reached the same conclusion. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah Cause you don't, <laughs> the thing of, of it is, is you don't, jump into the deep end without floaties right like yeah. <laughs> you you wade into the water and by doing that you start researching through biblical scholars who are accredited and like they're they're known to be like well received in their field of research and study so like that's yeah. where you start and then you quote unquote like you go into the apostate research like yeah that's where you get into the deep end like i'm not jumping headfirst into apostate literature right as my way to validate how i feel that comes later yeah that, that's right <laughs> like yeah now i do do that but no like when you believe you desperately want it to be true absolutely you don't want it to be false you're right. just hoping that you read this stuff and it's like a bunch of crazy conspiratorial bullshit. Right. Exactly. Which is why I try and push back on conspiratorial like stuff on the channel, because it's like, if I was a witness and I had seen that, I'm not saying that I would have stayed in forever, but it might've mm -hmm. cost me another year in the organization. Right. Yeah. Um, good comment from our, our buddy here, actually W Caleb. It's important for JWs to believe people take believing JWs away because otherwise they'd have to confront the fact that maybe people can just find a reason to stop believing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, I think that's the thing, right? Like I remember feeling that way when I would hear of people leaving and be like, that person wasn't like an idiot. Mm -hmm. They must have a reason, but why? And when you start realizing that you're afraid to look why, then it's mm -hmm. kind of like, oh, yeah, that's probably not good. Yeah, I mean, that was part of the reason why I woke up like at, the, around the same time that like dad died, your surgery, mm -hmm. your shunning, like 
And like, even my sister was disfellowshipped for over 10 years. And I always wondered, like, what did she do, but never got a chance to know. And that was always a huge regret for me because Mm. you are never encouraged. In fact, you're told out of like fear mongering to not ask why people get disfellowshipped, even your family members. So like all of this, like in hindsight, I'm looking back and like my sister's a very smart person. Mm-hmm. You're a very smart person. Like <laughs> again, <laughs> validation. <laughs> and like why if if you weren't, then you wouldn't have taken the time to like figure out why is it that I feel the way that I do? Yeah. You know, like if you want to to do like a life changing move, you're not just going to do it without counting the cost. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Count the cost and then build the thing. Yeah, no, that that's a really good point. It's sort of like people who believe that homosexuality is a choice Mm -hmm. or, you know, trans identity isn't valid. It's like, well, nobody would ever choose to undergo the social consequences of this if it was a choice. Like, not it's not the same thing, obviously, but it's similarly insulting Mm -hmm. because it's like, obviously, I wouldn't have blown up my life for no good reason. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that's where I'm at. Like, obviously, this is probably going to blow my life up, but... (laughs) <laughs> with that sound effect and everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I feel like I'm at this point where, like, if I can't advocate for my own self and, like, my own actions, like, as a social worker, because that's what I'm going to school for, how can I advocate for people who are in minority or in marginalized communities who don't have a voice? Yeah. So... Like, I don't know. I just need to be authentic. You know, I mm-hmm. need to be able to advocate for myself and what I'm doing in order to to be that voice for people who don't have the resources or the the avenues to do that for themselves. Yeah. And th- uh, that's why I always thought that you would wake up. I was like, I always told myself, like, it could be six months, it could be 10 years, but you, you care too much about like injustice and social issues you care about people Mm -hmm. in a very genuine way uh you're much less cynical than than me (laughs) and (laughs) true (laughs) um and and you're really really you you take on other people's pain you know Mm -hmm. you're you're very empathetic person and so i knew that that would eventually wait and and you're such a feminist too yeah and i think that was one of the things that you started to feel more comfortable talking to me about Mm -hmm. is is the like patriarchal side of the organization Mm -hmm. bothering you. Um, Yeah, for sure. Now let's, let's shout out a very interesting comment. Non-GW here notice they're popping up all over my town recently in upstate New York Mm. in force. Any legal steps I can take to make them leave? Um, I wouldn't, I'd probably not anything legal. uh, And it would just make them, preach even even harder to other people (laughs) because they would be like aha see because their whole narrative is you know that they're going to be persecuted and Mm -hmm. people are going to try and get them to stop the the best way to get them to stop would be to tell them uh anything critical like i don't want to be a part of your cult (laughs) you know use words that they're uncomfortable Mm -hmm. with yeah cult is definitely um a word that is like kryptonite <laughs> yeah if you say like i watch apostate videos yeah you'll never hear from them again absolutely uh, they might bother your neighbors just make a little little signs that say <laughs> we are apostates and we think and jehovah's s- witnesses are going to be sacrificed to an ancient pagan god instead of we are jehovah's witnesses it's <laughs> we are apostate <laughs> x witnesses <laughs> <laughs> elegant thank you <laughs> i've always been told my my songwriting skills are spectacular perfectly fit the meter <laughs> um okay let's do you want to get into this a little yeah, bit let's get into it okay um thank you for listening to all of that rambling no and, it was delightful and all of my likes 
Oh my god. Well, that's just that motherfucker. I, I, I he just, must have been the same guy. Who, I just he, really like leaning into people's like really petty critical stuff. So it's, I know I'm never gonna let that go. Christina is the biggest like comment warrior that I have. Like she'll read them and be like, did you see what this person said? <laughs> so care what you say. She'll see it. Um, and then yell at me about it. So <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll yell at you. You're so. always yelling at me. Stop talking. <laughs> That's me yelling. <laughs> Just in a, a different voice. <laughs> uh, subtle knife in the comments. My old internet friend, subtle, subtle knife. Uh, said that anybody who has seen us together would know that I did not drag you out of the organization. 100%. I think that's so true. Like, yeah. that's a take you could only have if you don't know us at all. Absolutely. Yeah. If you, it, to not, or like, you don't know us individually and then you don't know us together. Like. That's a really good point. Yeah. Like, even though people know my persona on on streams and in videos mm -hmm. like us as a couple like we have a very different dynamic mm -hmm. i i am not the more dominant personality you know <laughs> like when we yeah, we were at a pride event yesterday and we, we went to a drag show and like you were doing all the talking mm -hmm. i was just sitting vibing it's not yeah yeah you yeah, you I take was... the lead <laughs> I've always I've always said that about myself. But that's always how it was. You know, people yeah. in the organization would put up with me, but they liked Christina. <laughs> they wanted yeah. to be friends it's with her. It's funny because you said this morning you're like, if I didn't have you, I wouldn't be considered charming. People would think that I'm arrogant and <laughs> something annoying. Like, yeah, you you said something nice. You're like, oh, you're so, you're very charming. I was like, you make me charming. That's Without right. you, I would just be a fucking asshole. <laughs> and I know that because when we first met, you thought that I was arrogant. I did. That's on the record, too. That's in a video is, on the channel. I know it is. I said it, and I know that I said it, and I will continue <laughs> to stand I, by what I said. I wasn't telling you to back off. I felt like you were telling me to back off, and I'm telling you, no. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Go Before for it. Before we start this. Before we start, quick break. And uh, yes, yeah, so we wanted to talk about this watchtower. And I thought it would be a good thing to talk about with Christina here because there is a very bizarre article that a lot of ex-witnesses have been talking about uh, when a marriage mate views pornography. And so we thought it might be interesting to talk about our experience with this subject um listen i think what you have here is a situation where you got two people fighting for the top i think that's what we got um i don't know if i should have said that she's in the bathroom though she'll never know um i'm glad that people can relate to our story though i mean i i think it's definitely something that we want to talk about more because it's it is a situation that I suddenly realized I what where do you go for help about this? And I started listening to an, uh, an ex Mormon podcast, or I guess a Mormon podcast called marriage on a tightrope, which is about a, a member and somebody who left trying to keep their marriage intact. Uh, and that was all Mormon stuff. So yeah, we hope to be a resource for people. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime anybody wants to like zoom or chat or email yeah. or whatever. Yeah, for we're sure. Drink a little bit. So we're both in there. Okay. Very nice. Um, so, ah, uh, I've wanted to see Christina for some time. She's a great match for Jake. Very harmonious couple. That's uh, so sweet. That is very sweet. Harmony. 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 <laughs> So That's why we're a good couple because I know I can lob up a dumb bit and she'll catch it immediately. It's always been that way. <laughs> no, yeah. That's why it was love at first bit. Yikes. <laughs> so, okay. I wanted to show you this article because it has a moment that'll make you lose your mind. Uh, and I don't know what this moment is because you did not yeah. tell me before. So this is going to be all real You'll get a raw reaction. reaction. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's, you know, kind of your typical study article. And I should say this is the August 2023 study edition. Every article is kind of just a pitch perfect example of everything weird about the religion. Yikes. Uh, weird and harmful. So it starts 
fairly generically qualities that made Daniel precious to Jehovah. I don't like that word. Oh, you're so precious. You're so precious. Like Jehovah's like pinching Daniel's like, cheeks. That's what I say about peaches. Peaches is precious. Oh, Why not? She, she is, is very precious, precious right now. We should say. And I mean, look at this precious baby. Precious peaches. That's a precious. That's, that's precious to Jehovah right there. <laughs> She's like flailing in my arm. She's like, no. She's like, I was so comfortable already. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it's very infantilizing, isn't it? A hundred percent. Jehovah's your heavenly father, so you're just a no baby. But I believe the thing that made the rounds a bit um, is in this very common scenario. Oh, this will be interesting. <laughs> Peaches is now sitting on the desk. Where's the desk? Oh my god. <laughs> Remember that lady? Yeah. We we thought about talking about some convention stuff, which maybe we'll do next week, but I, I realized today that my headphone setup is not going to be good for us watching videos uh, as of right now. So you what? might remember that Daniel and his buddies were... Confronted. They had to confront persecution. They stood out because they would not worship false gods. And paragraph 13 says, like Daniel, our young ones are surrounded by people who have no respect for Jehovah and his standards. I'm trying to work on my JW voice. Such people may dislike anyone who claims to love God. Some even try to bully our young ones into breaking their loyalty to Jehovah. Break your loyalty. Break it. Okay, I have to say right now that being that I was actually in school yeah. and people knew I was a Jehovah's Witness, I was never bullied. And there, Same. Were, there were people who did not dislike me. Like, they didn't, like, there was nobody that came up to me and was like, I dislike you because you love God. <laughs> Jehovah, renounce him, curse him, and die. Like, for real. Like, that's not, not you. That's not, not you. a conversation or a, a scenario that ever actually occurred <laughs> no i had the same so, i had the same experience even even when i was peeing me i never understood these examples or like these statements because i was like do these things actually happen to people it, it probably it, does to some but they like to take the worst case scenario that absolutely. happens to some people and apply it broadly so for example note for example are you ready to take some notes oh, no. <laughs> what happened to a young man named graham who lives in <laughs> australia he faced a challenging situation when he attended high school. The teacher asked the class how they would react if a friend confided in them about being a homosexual. The teacher said that all in the class who would support a friend in pursuing such a lifestyle must stand on one side of the room, those who would not on the other side. Graham says the entire class. The entire class stood on the side that supported that lifestyle, except for me and the other witness. I don't know how to do Australian accent. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what happened. <laughs> <laughs> what happened next was a real test of Graham's loyalty to Jehovah. And that's where the ad would happen. Mm. This was a show. You know, and on the cliffhanger. For, so the, <laughs> for the rest of the hour-long class, he says, the other students and even the teacher taunted and insulted us. I did my best to defend my faith in a calm and reasonable way, but they didn't listen to a word I said. What effect did this test of loyalty have on Graham? He says, I did not like being the target of such verbal attacks, but I felt incredibly happy that I was able to defend my beliefs without compromise. That didn't sound Australian. Hey. But anyway. Good try. Um, What do you think of that? Thoughts? Comments? <laughs> concerns? <laughs> I mean, I have plenty of comments and plenty of concerns. Yeah. First of all, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And second of all, the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think um, I've been wanting to do a video for a little bit on whether watch terror stories are made up. Because uh, I do not think that they are made up. Like, I don't think they have a fake story department in, in Bethel. But what I think well, happens... Well, that wouldn't be a fake story. That would just be, a, like, I'm writing a story. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah. I'm the story writer. <laughs> like, But I don't think they're like, I don't know, let's make up a guy who does this. <laughs> like, I don't think it's mustache twirling. I, I think no. that 
Um, no, the mus the mustache twirling happens every Wednesday behind closed doors when the <laughs> governing body meets. They're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of them have, Sam Hurd has a mustache. He, wow. He could, he could potentially twirl that so He's thing. the only guy who like, does mustache twirling. <laughs> really, basically <laughs> just like hitching his <laughs> scruff. Um, He's just pinching his cheek. He's like, <laughs> 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 it's so precious. <laughs> Um, to me, this is an example of, this was this witness's perception of what happened, but Absolutely. I guarantee you that the teacher did not say that they had to support pursuing a homosexual lifestyle. That's not how anybody's talked since, you know, the late 90s. 1950s. <laughs> it's, it's like old timey terms. And then when he said like, they spent the time bullying and taunting me. I'll bet what really happened is they were like, no, like, don't you see? Or, like they were trying to get him to, to not see, be yes. a shithead. <laughs> so <laughs> to quote my boss, um, perception and reality are are not always the same thing, right? Mm. So But to quote Qui-Gon Jin, your focus determines your reality. So and his focus obviously is not on being open-minded to the LGBTQ community. No, that's true. <laughs> so therefore... Wagon was very close-minded. <laughs> no, this <laughs> no, guy... <laughs> I mean, I don't know about Qui Gon Jinn, <laughs> but he does in his Qui -Gon's maritime. <laughs> like, I don't go for that gay stuff. <laughs> Qui Gon, gay, <laughs> nailed it, <laughs> <laughs> crushed it. Thanks. No, but yeah. So his perception is that he was being taunted and bullied while he was being calm and reasonable. But what I like, I'm pointing it as if that's going to show up on the screen. Right. They didn't listen to a word I said. Something I have noticed is that witnesses conflate listening with agreeing. Absolutely. This is something my dad said, like, because I did meet with the elders a couple of times. And he's like, yeah, I don't think you listen to a word they said. And I said, of course I listened to them. I just didn't agree with their mm -hmm. conclusions. And often the advice they give in these uh, videos about counsel is to listen to counsel. They don't have to say the rest of it, which is like, obey, it, because they're kind of the same thing. I mean, yeah, listen, obey, and be blessed. Yeah. That's all said in one breath. Yeah. Like, it's all... it's all one train of thought because it's all like that's how you do it. Yeah. Like, it's not listen. It's a mathematical formula. Yes, it's not listen. <laughs> Think about it. Do I agree with it? Yes or no? And then obey or disobey. Like it's listen, obey, be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Ex absolutely. <laughs> very, very well said. This, this week's show is uh, sponsored by Axe Body Spray. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this uh, was some bullshit. I, th I thought it was very annoying. Well, and... <laughs> I, I also love the fact that like, being that I just recently gave testimony at a Senate and House bill hearing for humble brag, <laughs> must <laughs> might I include? <laughs> no, no, it was amazing. Um, about a Senate bill and that they're trying to pass in the o Ohio State House about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and yeah. taking that out of schools. Yeah. Like, it's because of these, like, um, exaggerated perspectives of conservative evangelical people or stories that things like this are, like, trying to be passed in government that would affect education. Yeah. And the inclusion of just people humans like no way can i ever see being that i'm in school right now it, even if it's in high school that this took place especially in high school would a teacher divide a classroom between <laughs> two whether that you support homosexuality yeah. or you don't because you better believe that parents are going to be calling that school board yeah. and ra like rioting at the front doors. Oh, I'll bet you the witness parents called. <laughs> so, but like, I just feel like this is like 
super like exaggerated. I don't know. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I think I'm so sure too. that the witness parents called, but like, did this even actually happen? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. Does that it, make does, does that make sense? If, yeah. Like, what I said. Yeah, it seems completely preposterous. But I don't know how they do things in Australia. Fucking toilets flush the other way over there. Well, there we're all humans, no matter where we go. <laughs> I don't think in Australia that's true. I don't think so. Do you think we're all toilets that flush the other way? <laughs> From my understanding, everyone in Australia is a toilet, <laughs> and they're upside down. Um, I just find it very um, like you, we don't all have to agree, but we can all respect that we come from different places and experiences in life and accept that yeah and it seems like the point of the exercise like is if a friend confided in you how could you help them regardless of what your beliefs are absolutely you know that i would think would be the, the point of the lesson yeah you know how to be supportive whatever uh there was a comment that i just oh. saw um from elizabeth Ooh. Elizabeth Sarim, as a teacher, I can say these Watchtower scenarios are BS. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. Being that I mean I'm not a teacher, obviously, but I'm definitely a student in the classroom. I just teachers are they are educated. They go through school to facilitate situations and like prevent situations like that from happening. Yeah, they're not they're not creating situations like that. Yeah, right. So. I completely agree. Uh, I think we should get to the porn. <laughs> you always want to get to the porn. I always say that. I know. Get to the porn. Get to the porn. And Come on. Instead of get to the point. Get to the point. Yeah. Get, get to, to the, the porn. The porn. <laughs> <laughs> wait, let's. Oh, wait. No, it'll fuck up if I do it because it'll catch the way. I was going to uh, say, let's play the audio because I'm sure it's. When a marriage mate views pornography. <laughs> so just some choice quotes. I felt as if my husband had repeatedly committed adultery. I felt humiliated, unattractive, and worthless. I could not talk to anyone about it. I suffered in silence. I felt as if Jehovah didn't care about me. Jehovah specifically doesn't care any fucks about you. <laughs> he don't care no fucks. <laughs> in fact, he's probably watching two people fuck right now. He's watching porn all the time. Can we say that? <laughs> no. I mean, if he knows that you watch porn, that means that he saw it. Well, and then when you're having sex with whoever you're having sex with, he's watching that and too. And he's like, <laughs> or he's like, mm. <laughs> I'm going to flip the Next. channel. <laughs> <laughs> he can, he can just flip through, yeah. hovers over the thumbnail for a second. <laughs> and he's like, mm. <laughs> the above expressions show how much a wife suffers when her husband views pornography. Um, and if he has been doing so in secret, perhaps for months or years, she may feel that she cannot trust him anymore. As one wife said, I wondered, who is this man beside me? Are there other things he is hiding from me? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> that was that was the wife wondering, are there other things that he's hiding from me? And I just thought you looked so cute. <laughs> I was distracted. So I, I thought this would be interesting to talk about... Uh, you know, not to get too TMI or anything, because that's definitely something like we had to have one of those conversations. When we were both pee me. Yeah. I had tearfully admitted to you that I watched pornography and, you know, it was a cause of, of stress. And yeah. it, it, you, you know, talked about, you know, I'd have to work my way back up to trust and, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Did yeah. you feel these things? I don't know if I felt like I felt as if Jehovah didn't care about me. Um, I don't know. I feel like maybe I felt humiliated, unattractive, and worthless. But I feel like yeah. the yeah. Hmm. I don't feel like that anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, I I feel like this article when I was reading over it is very like extreme and unhealthy yes. in its approach to this. I would agree. And like Okay, first of all, I couldn't talk to anybody about it. I suffered in silence. Okay, first of all, that's the issue here is that we're not talking about it. Yeah. And the fact that you feel like you're isolated and that it's a you problem and not a 
everybody problem. That's a huge issue. And it's unhealthy that like, I don't know. I think that's the, the unhealthy, um, atmosphere surrounding porn in the organization is that we have, they have articles like this, but then you feel like you don't have anybody to talk to about it. Yeah. It's still like a shameful subject. And the, yeah, it kind of like reaffirms that hey, don't worry, you're not alone, but also it is a huge deal. And you're right to feel like this is the mm -hmm. biggest deal in the world. Um, but also that you can't really do anything about it. <laughs> right. And then to, which and is then the point to conflate it to adultery to me is very, again, unhealthy. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like those are two very, very different things to each their own. Like you don't have to agree with your mate watching porn yeah. or not, but to conflate the two, I feel like you're you're it's trying to convince somebody that an apple is an orange yeah like i i feel like the value of uh talking about it is you know like i think we're at a point where it's not a big deal yeah for either of us mm -hmm. and it's just like whatever and you know, if you're in a healthy sexual relationship, you can even watch together. <laughs> that is um, true. And, but like, that is not a level of, um, like consent that you're allowed to reach mm -hmm. when you're peeny witnesses. Right. Yeah. The fact that you like, as a wife would have to suffer in silence that you couldn't even talk to your, your husband about how you're feeling in regards to him watching porn. Like, yeah, that's upsetting. Yeah. Like you, you, you're so sexually repressed as an individual that you can't even like sit your husband down and be like, this is how I feel about you watching porn. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that in general, they don't have any kind of guidelines for how to communicate openly about, sex and no yeah desire and consent which would Absolutely. be a, a good thing for the men in the organization to to learn about <laughs> yeah. and uh but because there's just none of that and because sex is saved until marriage and education around mm -hmm. it uh is just non-existent mm -hmm. then you're not able to have any conversations about sex really like mm -hmm. I think a conversation about this could open the pathway to a, a better, healthier sexual relationship with your partner. Absolutely. But I don't think that this article <laughs> reaches a point where that's really <laughs> no, what's happening. No, I, I think that, like, for us, I, I know that, like, we've had a, like, an up and down relationship in that regard like it's been healthy but like we've been trying to figure things out that should have probably been figured out a long time ago yeah maybe we, like before <laughs> most people get married yes at all. yeah um we're just now figuring out because we're both awake yeah because like of this because we've been sexually repressed by yeah the the thought control of things like this and you know not everybody has to agree with you know having porn in their house not everybody not everybody has to agree with you know having spicy i don't even know i don't I, know i feel like i'm being like a weird sex therapist and I don't i'm know. loving and it I, i'm just I, waiting I, to see where you're going i you. really don't know what i'm saying no but i'm just saying like we we've had to figure things out because yeah. of our sexual repression because of the organization <coughs> and because of articles like this yeah. now we're we're having to figure things out and like what what works for us yeah when i feel like a lot of people outside of the organization they know that before they get married oh, whether yeah. whether it's with each other or just like about themselves because right. they've not had that um that control of, yeah repression and mm -hmm. control yeah absolutely um an innocent mate 
anyway, yeah, so it does. Can, what can an innocent mate do? For simplicity, we will speak of the husband as the one who is viewing pornography. However, many of the principles discussed in this article will benefit a husband whose wife views pornography. Not all, but many. You know, I think I love that. We, I love when they do that. We watched the you know pillow videos again recently, and um, one thing that's so bizarre is for women, they don't even call it masturbation; they nope. call it self abuse. Mm -hmm. And they say specifically that it's usually not a problem for women; it's more of a problem for men, which of course is so illustrative of their <laughs> ignorance. Yes, like absolutely. yeah, no, women don't have sexual desires; just dudes. Well, yeah, because. Women should are you just, drink the rest of this? You can. Okay. Women are just supposed to lay there and yeah, give them their marriage due. Their due. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am owed my due. <laughs> I would come in ringing a loud bell, wearing a robe, saying, "The due is owed." <laughs> I'm here to take my due. Seven o'clock is on, and all is well so long as I am paid my due. <laughs> Don't blame yourself. Um, this is also, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I, I mean, a lot of this advice, I think, is <clears throat> not bad in and of itself. Like, it may also be helpful to under, may, <laughs> may. <laughs> <laughs> they are so like, avoidant of any I know. declarative I, statements. I love that there's no solid, like, word choice here we yeah. can't we can't land on one side so we we straddle the middle here hey speaking of straddling <laughs> um it may also be helpful to understand that a husband's use of pornography does not mean that his wife is deficient as a woman experts on the subject no source cited point right. out that pornography creates insatiable cravings for fantasy that no woman can satisfy I don't know. Sound out in the comments. Is that correct? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, man. Like experts point this out, huh? Like they're just pornography, all pornography in all cases, no matter how much you view it, creates insatiable cravings or fantasy that no woman can satisfy. I think that it opens you up to understanding what you enjoy. Yeah. I'm just like and finding out like, and when you know what you like, you find people who like the same thing. Yeah. Like, it's like, when you find a good book. <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> and, porn book. Yeah, yeah, and you find that somebody else liked that book too. And you're like, okay, cool. Like We're on Goodreads, but for just smutty <laughs> fan fiction. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's also, this was really bizarre, I thought. Oh. But in my opinion, is very revealing as to the culture of the organization i need to say my 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 piece about this your marital do you need to yeah. say your due <laughs> yes okay uh avoid excessive worry catherine said that obsessing over her husband's use of pornography consumed her entire life francis said who's this different person <laughs> can we get catherine's thought on this catherine francis catherine francis <laughs> this is like john mark yeah. francis <laughs> catherine francis said I get anxious whenever I lose track of where my husband is. I'm a nervous wreck all day. Other wives have revealed how embarrassed they feel in the presence of fellow Christians who might know of their husband's problem. Still others have admitted how isolated they feel because they think that nobody understands their situation. So, first of all, I find it so unhealthy yeah. and so odd that you would say i get anxious whenever i lose track of where my husband is <laughs> like yeah i'm gonna lose the remote <laughs> oh, God damn where, it, damn it, where, where is it, it? Where is it? <laughs> jake i just you, had it did you just lose the remote again <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is an hourly occurrence <laughs> <laughs> no but like you're really that upset that your husband watches porn that when you lose track of him you get freaked out like he goes to the grocery store yeah and you haven't heard it like he hasn't called you or texted you what do you think he's like down the bread aisle and he's stuck his dick in a bread bag and he's jerking off like <laughs> i don't understand what's happening like what <laughs> he's been at the library for way too long <laughs> he must be jerking it in the car <laughs> but like i don't understand like where like what 
happens that elicits that much anxiety to that level like and if it's in the house i mean how big are these people's fucking houses that you lose track i mean I, we it, can't it, really lose track of each other is it mar-a-lago where there's 33 <laughs> bathrooms i hope he's not in the there's got to be some porn in this box right i mean it's in the bathroom it's that's why trump's so mad that they took those boxes like, that wasn't porn those were my special staff staff stash that was my staff special stash. <laughs> 1970s full bush pornography. They don't put the bush in there anymore. <laughs> like, I honestly don't understand. Like, he did everything right and he was indicted. <laughs> the thing that he did wrong was that he didn't lock the bathroom from the inside. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So. Yes, though, uh, um, talking about the the culture and losing track of your husband, um, that's really quite toxic, isn't it? Absolutely. Like, and, and but I think is very natural. Like yes, and something that I think we both had to get more comfortable with, mm -hmm. like us having plans with other people mm -hmm. who aren't uh, us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it might even be of the opposite gender. Yeah. So I guess I the anxiety comes from like are you going from watching porn to having sex with other people right oh i'll, I'll bet you're right i actually didn't <laughs> pick up on that but that's I, i'm sure exactly what it is because i'm sure that people like when it's one of the quotes from the very beginning of the article says like it's like committing adultery like mm, yeah if your fantasy is so insatiable if you're lusting after a woman that's you've committed adultery in your heart yeah. 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 And like it, the experts on the subject point out that pornography creates insatiable cravings for fantasy. Like, <laughs> so if your wife can't, can't, you know, satiate. I love that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't expect that to tickle you quite so much. Um, your cravings, then maybe you go look for it somewhere else like i guess you, that's that is the culture of the religion yeah. there like i don't know if you remember this but i would feel or I, I would hear rather people say if a husband cheated on his wife like there would be this victim blaming of, of the wife for like mm. not satisfying her husband yeah. mm -hmm. uh or like you know women saying like well that's why you gotta satisfy your husband because they'll start yep. looking elsewhere yep. and it's yep. like Anyway, it, it speaks to the culture. And yes. I, I think the other thing, the thing that's really revealing about this is other wives have revealed how embarrassed they feel in the presence of fellow Christians who might know of their husband's problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're all following the direction on, on not gossiping and spreading rumors, yeah. how could such a situation even transpire? You know what? JW's fucking love to gossip. Give <laughs> me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> it, they love gossip. And Absolutely. It is, I think it's the big, in a weird way, maybe the biggest lie that the organization yes. tells because other than them saying that shunning doesn't impact the family relationships and shit, but like yeah. they rely on gossip yes. to enforce the group's uh social control mechanisms yes. they need everybody to be a policeman mm -hmm. monitoring everybody else if they're a good or bad association yeah, uh, absolutely if somebody sees you doing something mm -hmm. they're supposed to approach you and if you yes. don't change then you can go to the elders mm -hmm. like gossip and spreading rumors is integral to the social structure of jehovah's witnesses Why, like and i'm not saying that when somebody gets this fellowship that they're like so and so has gotten disfellowshipped for a blah 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 reason, like. But there's a reason behind the fact that they're like, don't ask why, right? <laughs> but I all, but I also just got that you know that email from somebody who I I know in real life mm -hmm. and like knows our family. <laughs> this keeps happening as of late, <laughs> and um, they they mentioned that a family member of mine who didn't know they were Pimo couldn't wait to tell them about my apostate YouTube channel. And yes. that's how they, that yeah. was the first apostate yes. they watched because a witness was like, did you hear what James doing? That, right. Which is a dream for me. I I hope that that happens Always. to all my friends. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you hear about Jake's apostate YouTube channel? <laughs> you should watch it. They're like, don't mind if I do. <laughs> and they're like, wow, these early videos are so bad. <laughs> you could not get the audio in sync ever. Um, so yeah, 
this culture of paranoia, isolation, and gossip creating a sense of shame. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> cool, cool. I mean, it's definitely shame culture, right? Like, uh, the women or the wife feel shame because they feel like they did something wrong. The men feel shame because they feel like they like cross some kind of boundary right yeah and then everybody surrounding feels shame because they've gossiped about the whole situation surrounding the two people that they don't know anything about like it's it's definitely shame culture at its finest i also <laughs> i have to say is seeking help from the elders really gonna feel great if you're a woman in this if you're a woman in the situation, <laughs> seek support from congregation elders. They can be a shelter from the wind, a refuge from the rainstorm, which first of all, they might even be able to recommend a sister in whom you can confide and find comfort. Wow. They can like recommend a woman. So this is what I have to say to that. <laughs> That's bullshit. Um, why on earth would you ever go to an elder who has no schooling and family like counseling or marriage counseling like there are people who go to school specific to that whole situation yeah. there's obviously like if you really feel like there's something wrong with your marriage and porn isn't like the it's like the straw that broke the camel's back yeah there's obviously more going on than that the elders aren't going to know what to do. They're going to... They're all watching porn themselves. Right? Almost guaranteed. And, yes. Almost guaranteed. Yes. And they're all they're going to do is share scriptures with you and pray. And then... Yeah. What are they going to say? This is the thing. Like, the uniformity of information in the organization is such that they're never going to tell you anything you don't already know. And yes. that you couldn't already find right. on the website. Right. And then you've just confided in them, like, one of the most intimate aspects of your marriage with like two men who are policing the congregation like that's creepy and gross and now they're they are among the group who know of the situation and you feel mm -hmm. weird around absolutely yeah so to me i'm i'm sitting there going if you really have a marital problem don't go to your elders go to a, th go to a, a marriage therapist. counselor yeah yeah <laughs> like if you yeah. really if you really want to solve whatever issues you have there's counseling, like go get help. And this is coming from somebody who is currently studying to be a counselor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on now. Now this reminded me of something intensive care bear, which is great screen name says everyone notices attractive women. Yeah. You, you peep, you take a little peep. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hear, know one of the most disgusting things an elder ever said to me? Uh -oh. I'll tell you who it was Ooh, okay. after the stream's over. I can't wait. They said, and of course, I thought it was so funny back then. And I just remembered it the other day and was like, holy shit, that's fucked up. Uh oh. He said, if you get caught for sexual morality, it better be with someone really hot so you can bring her to the judicial committee and the elders can at least be like, hey, we get it. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That's so upsetting. You won't believe who said it when I tell you. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm Speaking just... of gossip, there you go. <laughs> but we're not part of the the organization, so. True, true. Yeah, now we just, we're like, we love gossip. We love it. <laughs> I'm always gossiping. We do it all the time. give us a gossip. Ooh. Um, the weird conclusion of this is that you really can't do anything about it. Yeah, so we're um, just talking about something and we're going round and round in circles. Yeah. Might you be able to help your husband overcome his habit of viewing pornography? Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, but Perhaps. Uh, like, let's see. Uh, do you believe that you can help your husband in a similar way? Gross. If so, why not read and discuss this article together? Honey, what? I know it'll help. Let's read an article about <laughs> why we need to help your porn addiction. Porn is so bad. I mean, you know, and not to be like both sides about it, but this would be very embarrassing to the husband. No, Everybody's talking it's about him would. pulling his little pud <laughs> to some <laughs> to some milfs. <laughs> Honey, I talked to the elders about how you jerk your penis uh, to sexually arousing images and how like you squirt out of your little pud. I talked to the elders about that. <laughs> I really hope that one day I get to say that. <laughs> I hope you do too. 
<laughs> I know that's been important to you for a long time. I didn't realize it was important to me. And now I, the realization has hit me. Yeah. Like, like your little pun squirting. Little... <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. What if he persists? Nevertheless, he persisted. If your husband has a relapse, does this mean he is a unrepentant? <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. This. Okay. I was talking to my therapist about this. And the, the, the word, like the way things are worded in modern, like evangelical groups now yeah. is very like, um, the way that therapists talk. Mm. And it's so true. Like when you see, like, if your husband has relapsed, does this mean mm. that he is unre like, it's very, like they're trying to reach more people in a way that seems like less abrasive and more understanding you know what i mean yeah yeah and i thought that was very insightful no that's that's a really good point and this really does seem like off of the nofap subreddit uh i think i, I it's something i've been concerned about for a while but I think we're going to have, there's going to be a bit of a reckoning in a few years with a lot of uh, men who wake up being incels because 100%. that is the culture. I mean, it already happens yes, uh, to some degree, but I think more and more the people who stay in, especially the men are probably staying in because they really like this <laughs> Andrew Tate side of the organization Absolutely, where they're told that women are, you know, subservient subservient yes. and you are the head yeah. of the woman mm -hmm. and you and are they, owed sex and they don't yeah. like women who have strong personalities or feel like women should have independence like i know for a fact that like i had elders make um passive comments about how like not in these words but to sit down and shut up because I'd be mm, too opinionated yeah. about stuff. And being that I was young and naive, I didn't realize that that's what they were saying. Yeah. But looking back, that's exactly what they were saying because I was, you know, stepping into shoes that didn't belong to me. Right. Yeah. I, I had that. Re uh, realization a couple weeks ago when we watched uh, King Jay's uh, Jude or not Judicial Committee, but like an elders meeting that she had, and the way that they acted towards her was very different than the way they acted towards me. And oh, I, absolutely! I kind of realized in real time, like, oh, they like it's because a woman is like telling them that mm -hmm. they're wrong, and that's mm -hmm. like that breaks their brain. That absolutely. is not a thing that's allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's going to be yeah. a bit of a problem. You're going to have, and I mean, we already have a, an issue of people like leaving the organization because of their pro vaccine stance, <laughs> you yes. know, like, yes. eh, we're going to, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. glad that people are going into social work in, uh, <laughs> in my household. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can deal with that. I, I could just, uh, like, I get to make funny jokes <laughs> and make people's voice go high <laughs> go when high. it's supposed to be low. Um, what though, if your mate simply shows no interest in fighting his problem? Understandably, you might experience recurring feelings of disappointment, anger, and betrayal. Seek peace of mind by leaving the matter in Jehovah's hands. Continue to draw close to Jehovah. He'll never masturbate in secret through study, prayer, and meditation. Jehovah won't masturbate in secret? No, he won't. He would never <laughs> betray you. He's one of the good ones. As you do, be assured that he is trying closer to you, too. As stated, it is... Okay, shut the fuck up. Um, yeah, and so seek more support from the elders. Um, so, yeah, if, if you can't make your marriage work, too bad. Because even though we said it feels like adultery and Jesus said it was almost the same thing, it's not... So you have to stay with them. This is what, okay. So this again is what causes a woman in the organization to feel helpless and isolated because you, if this article was about the quote unquote self abuse that a woman would do. Yes. It would be a completely different message. Oh, the tone would be very different. But because this is about a man watching porn, yeah. masturbating to porn, that a woman needs to just suck it up, 
pray to God and move on. Keep calm and carry on. Yeah. And I, I, that's such a, a helpless and isolating place to be. Like, no wonder why you would feel like Jehovah doesn't care about you. Yeah. Because Jehovah's not going to answer that prayer because he doesn't fucking care. If Jehovah really loved me, he wouldn't let my husband look up videos of big booty Latinas. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or, or MILFs or... getting fucked in the <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he would never let that happen. Joe doesn't care about me. He let my husband look up <laughs> Simpsons porn. What? <laughs> I don't know. That's upsetting. Yeah, that, I mean. He references that, and I think you should leave. That's hilarious. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I just feel like that, like, know, knowing what I, like, as a woman, I, I just know, like, reading that article would be really upsetting. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't think you would feel comfortable comforted after that <laughs> at all and this is yeah that's what i'm saying Bear good, Woody. yes like good, good point the absolute arbitrary limits of their yes i agree yeah why isn't divorce allowed in this situation why like not? if if that's the conflation we're making then why wouldn't you have grounds for divorce like especially like if your husband does relapse and he doesn't seem to give a shit about how you feel about it. <laughs> and also you would think like if, if the point of this article is to say like, here's how you deal with this problem. Wouldn't it be more helpful for them to be like, it, you know, it can feel like adultery, but it isn't, you know, he's not sleeping with somebody else. Mm -hmm. This is for, you know, it could be an opportunity to have like more be like, it is a betrayal of your trust, mm -hmm. but let's also talk about why this happens mm -hmm. and, you know, blah, but no, it's like, this is absolutely as horrifying as you think it is. And there's nothing you can do except for pray. Yeah. That's horrible. <laughs> what a miserable life that would be. Yeah, absolutely. Like if that, and then like going to the elders, they're going to just tell you the same thing. Yeah. They're going to be like, in order to get through this, you two are going to have to pray together. And then sister, you're going to have to try and support him and be strong for him. And and you'll have to pray too. Yeah. Pray to be a, a better, stronger support mm -hmm. system for him. Yeah. Like, again, just win add, him over without a word. Yeah. Again, the weaker vessel continues to take on even more burden than she's supposed to because she's supposedly the weaker vessel. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked up. I love this comment. Wild that we're always supposed to feel crushed and lowly for it to make sense. As soon as you're happy, they're like, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really true. Like, if yeah. you ever, like, turn down a shepherding call, they'll be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Everybody's depressed. You need one of these. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, I think that that's about all I can handle of this garbage. Yeah. 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 Not least of which because this room is small and hot. It is very hot. And not here. just because we're in here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good one. Because the air conditioning doesn't seem to reach this room. <laughs> well, it's because we have that window open. Oh, yeah, we have this window open. Um, well, my darling, this was wonderful. What a fun yeah, time. It was good. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for sharing your experience and thanks for sticking by me. Hey, anytime. Thanks for sticking by me. You know, we love each other a lot. We do. And it's really uh it's really great to be on the even, same page. Even when you watch porn. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes because of that. Like you walk in on me watching porn and you're like, honey, I love you. And then I get stuck to you because you're watching porn. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's just stuff everywhere. I'm just like on my lap. And then I'm like stuck to you. And I'm like, yeah, I gotta get this stuff off of me. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.